In this video, we're going to learn how to construct the confidence interval for a population proportion. The general information for constructing a confidence interval for a population proportion is outlined here, but let's see how this all can be applied to an example. In this example, um, it says that among 238 cell phone owners aged 18 through 24, surveyed by the Pew Research Center, 102 said that their phone was an Android phone. And our goal will be to obtain a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of cell phone owners aged 18 through 24 nationwide who own an Android phone. The fact that it says nationwide, it means that we're trying to obtain an interval that contains population proportion of Android phone owners. So we start by computing the value of p hat. p hat is the sample proportion. Because our interval is going to be based on the sample proportion. To find p hat sample proportion, we have to take a number of Android phone owners in the sample, which is 102, and divide by the sample size. This is just a standard formula for calculating proportion, right? Part of the total. So that is 0.429. So about 43% of people in that sample own an Android phone. 43%. Now, how about population? Can we say that nationwide, 43% of people of that age um, own an Android phone? We can't say that because if we obtain different sample, sample proportion might be different there, right? So sample proportions vary from sample to sample. We cannot guarantee that population proportion is the same. However, we can use this number to estimate population proportion. And so we're going to construct an interval based on this sample proportion such that we will be 95% confident that population proportion is in that interval. So to obtain the interval, we will be using the following formula. So interval has the lower bound as an upper bound, right? From, from this number to that number. So obtain those two bounds, we'll have to subtract and then add same quantity from the sample proportion. In order for us to use this formula, we want to confirm that sampling distribution of the sample proportion when sample size is 238 is approximately normal. And that's going to be step two. Before we apply the formula, let's check if normal distribution can be used. So normal distribution can be used if those two conditions are satisfied. So the first one is outlined here. We, we have to check if this quantity on the left is greater than or equal to 10. So what is involved in that quantity? N represents sample size. And in our case, it's 238. And then P hat, we already know it's sample proportion, so it's 0.429 times 1 minus 0.429, it's 102, which is definitely greater than or equal to 10. So this first condition is satisfied. And the second condition, lowercase n, is less than or equal to 0 0.05 uppercase n. This means that the sample size should be no more than 5% of the population size. Now, we're not given information about the population size, but we can just use a common sense. Um, in this example, population represents all people aged 18 through 24. Well, we know there are millions or tens of millions of people of that age, right, in the nation. So, 238 people in the sample is definitely less than or equal to 5% of the population. So, we'll just, I'll just check off this condition. Now, since both conditions are satisfied, it means that we can continue and use the formula and use normal distribution to, to obtain the interval. Remember, part of the formula was z with alpha over 2 as a subscript. Let's talk about that. So, every time when z has a subscript, it represents area to the right of that given z value area to the right. 
Remember how in the Z table by default all areas are areas to the left? Well, every time um, Z has a subscript, as I already said, it's going to be referring to the area to the right of Z. So first we have to determine alpha. Alpha corresponds to the level of confidence, and this is how it's calculated. It's 1 minus, and then the given level of confidence I need to convert to a decimal. So if you remember in the problem, it said that obtain a 95% confidence interval. So 95% is the same as 0.95, and that's what I have to uh, subtract from alpha. So I'll make a note that this came from 95% level of confidence. And then 1 minus 0 0.95 is 0 0.05 right? So that's what alpha is. And that value I'm going to put right here in the numerator of this fraction. So now this is how it's looked. That's z. Um, and then subscript is 0 0.05 over 2. Well, now that I can calculate, right? If I divide 0 0.05 by 2, I'm going to get 0 0.025, right? So that is area to the right of z. To the right of z. But now what is z itself? Well to calculate z itself or to find z itself I'm going to be using z table. I know that z table is set up in such way that it only shows areas to the left of z, right? But knowing area to the right we can always find area to the left. So knowing that 0.025 is area to the right of z I can find area to the left, area to the left, by subtracting it from 1. So 1 minus 0 0.025, that is 0.975. And that's what I'm going to look up in the table. So here's the table. Now in the table, I know that areas are all those numbers where Z scores are the first column and the first row, right? So since I have area, it means that I have to find or I have to look that number up in the table. So it's 0.975 over here. So I am on the negative side of the Z table. And on the largest number I can see here is 0 0.4641. So I'm going to turn this over and check the other side. 0 0.975. 0 0.975. 0 0.978. 0 0.977. 975. Right here. Okay. So I found exactly 0 0.975. Now, just as a side note, if you're not able to find the exact value in the Z table, find the closest. Now, based on this area, the corresponding z-score should be, I have to look at this number, that's how it starts, point, uh, I mean 1.9, these are the first two digits, and then the third digit is right here, 6. So, all together it's 1.96. I'll write it down here. So, 1.96. We obtain the z value that's part of the formula. And once we have it, it means that we're ready to find the lower and upper bounds of the interval. So let me remind how the formula goes. So the lower bound is found by taking sample proportion and subtracting the following quantity, z, sub so alpha over 2, that's the critical value, times square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat over n. And the upper bound of the interval is found by adding those two quantities. So it's p hat sample proportion plus z alpha over 2 times square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat divided by n, and that's all inside the square root. Okay, well, let's start with, up, uh, with the lower bound. Now, p hat, uh, we found it in step one, it's 0.429, right? 
and then at z sub alpha over 2 that's what we found in step 3 right c step 3 we had we found in step 1 c step 1 so that's 1.96 1 1.96 and then we have everything for the square root in the square root we have p hat once again 0 0.429 times 1 minus 0 0.429 divided by n is the sample size size it's 238 all that i'm going to put into the calculator i think i'll do just one expression so it's 0 0.429 minus 1.96 square root 0.429 times 1 on um, parentheses 1 minus 0.429 divided by 238 enter so i got point i'll round it to let's say three decimal places 0.366 so that is the lower bound of the interval now the upper bound is again found similar way but we just have to add so that means that i will be using same numbers again well i can rewrite it but um, i have a quick way of calculating it on the calculator i will rewrite it but i'm not going to enter it again so the only thing i need to change is plus what i'll do that's um, well one option of course is to enter it again but here's the trick what i can do i can go back to the um, calculator highlight that expression i already had with minus sign press enter and then calculator is going to let me overwrite um, this expression so i just have to go to the left until i hit minus sign and change it to plus so changing to plus entering plus everything else stays the same so i, I press enter and i'll get a result 0.492 that's 0.492 and here's the interval that we obtained so interval we're going to interpret result in a second but this is how i'm going to write the interval um, mathematically first so it's from 0.366 to 0.492 now what is the meaning of that so first of all well these are proportions certain proportions let me convert them to percentages so it's a little bit easier to think about them so this is approximately 37 percent and that is approximately 49 percent well this is the meaning of this interval as we said we don't know what population proportion is exactly however we're able to construct interval such that we think and we're 95 percent confident that population proportion of Android owners is somewhere in between this interval from 37% to 49%. So here's the interpretation. Finally, I'm going to show how to obtain this result, how to find the confidence interval using calculator. This is actually very quick and easy. Um, so on the calculator, I have to press stat right here. Um, then I have to switch to tests tab and then in the test tab I have to scroll down to line number well not number line a line a it says one prop z int let's see what we'll need to use it um, okay there are a couple lines three lines that we have to enter x and and then c level well, this is actually very easy because we know n, right? That's the sample size in our example is 238. Now, what is x? Going back to x. x represents the number of individuals in that sample with specific characteristics. So what kind of characteristic we're working with right now? Well, um, Android phone owners, right? That's the characteristic. And we know that in our sample, there are, what, 102 individuals with that characteristic. So that's what you enter in the first two lines information about the sample and c level well it's the confidence level right we're given 95 percent confidence so here i'll have to enter 0.95 for 
Once I press enter, then I obtain the interval. So let's compare that to the results that we got. So remember our interval is from 0.366 to 0.492. Um, it's slightly, slightly different, right? So the first one, if I round to three decimal places, it's 0.366, that's good. This, the, um, the upper bound is slightly off. It's just due to all the rounding we did. When we calculated sample um, sample proportion so, so that's where i put calculator steps 